Time is going short, and in just a few months from now, precisely on July 31st, 2021, Microsoft will shut down Skype for good. What are you doing about it? Waiting until time comes and get desperated, not knowing how to continue communicating within your organization? Don't worry, folks. This video here addresses exactly this need. How to transition from Skype to Teams. Hello, professionals. This is Diogo Rodão, and welcome back to another class to learn how to transition from Skype to Teams. In other words, to not be caught red-handed. Announced by Microsoft back there in 2017, Skype is going to retire and there is nothing you can do about it. Just like any product, Skype lifecycle is coming to an end. More details about Microsoft announcement can be found on the description below. Meanwhile, what are the things we do in Skype for Business nowadays? We chat and maintain conversations with one or many individuals, we make and receive phone calls, we join meetings, we determine our public status, you know, green for when we are online, red we are busy or in a meeting or in a phone call, yellow when we are away, etc. We manage our favorites and contact groups, we see our calendar for upcoming meetings, and we can see the history of what was spoken before with someone. Given my experience of several years of working with Skype for Business, I can tell you that these are 95% more or less of all the usage that someone does in Skype. Let's find out now if these features will exist in Teams and how will they work in there. But before I continue, just keep in mind that if you perhaps like this content, please consider to subscribe. For content producers like me, both subscriptions and likes are tremendous help in growing my channel. Let's cut the story and let's get ready for the unavoidable. Chat. All right, guys, so here we see Skype, and uh, these are the contents for my current work. You guys cannot see, but uh, they are here. What we do here, we choose someone to, to, to talk with, or we search here the name of someone. We open the person's chat, and we start typing, hi, there. And we send a message, and uh, we start chatting, right? This is Skype, right? How to do this in Teams? In Teams, you're gonna come here to this chat menu. You're gonna come here to this little button here, this, search field will appear here you type the name of the person you wanna talk with let's choose uh, this guy here the first one and uh, two things about uh, this screen first whatever you ever spoke to him will come back here for you to be in context which is very nice skype doesn't do that and uh, it will open for you to start chatting by the way so whatever you send to him right now he'll receive a message a pop-up in his computer just like skype very very simple we say something here Let's say, hi there, how are you? And uh, the guy will receive the pop-up in his computer right away. So this is the very first basic thing we do in Skype, chatting. Here in Skype, if we click here, we can invite more people, right? So if I invite uh, this guy here and click twice, see, now became a conversation with three. Here in Teams, it's similar. I just needed to click on this button up here, add more people and uh, Type the name of the other person I want to invite. Let's choose this guy down here. Type add and uh, voila, became a conversation of two people. And here, same mechanics as uh, Skype. If I type something, hi there, both of them will receive this message. And uh, why they're not the same as the previous one? Because it's a different audience. So different than Skype, if you add someone, the context remains. The other person comes at that moment. The other person will not see the history, but you and whoever were there before, you guys continue to see. In Teams, because it's a different uh, audience, different uh, uh, people in there, becomes a blank new conversation. This is a drawback, but uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Here on Outlook, we are also very used to get someone that we want to talk with in any mail that is going on, etc. Put the mouse over the person's name and click on this very icon here, right? To send a instant message to this person, right? But right now, Outlook is connected to, let's say Office, is connected to Skype as instant messaging app. But you can flip it to Teams if your corporation, your company, or yourself wanted to start switching to Teams already. So how to do that? You do that through Teams. Let's see how it works. Here in Teams, you click on your picture, you click here on settings, and you enable this option here, register Teams as chat app for Office, requires restarting all applications. It means that if you enable this checkbox and restart all applications, if you click on that uh, I am icon, Teams will open in the chat with that person. And again, if you have a previous chattings with that person, the chat will come in context. Very nice. Audio calls or video calls. 
So the other thing we are very used to do here in Skype is to go to this contact or have this contact open here and click on this button down here, right? To start a phone call. Uh, how to do this in Teams? Let's see. In Teams, with the chat opened with the person, just click on this button up here. Then a audio or a video, whatever you choose, will start right away. Quite simple, no? Joining meetings. To join meetings from Skype, you were used to coming to this icon here, right? To the Canada. You are not seeing anything right now because of this Skype not connected to any exchange, but in your organization it will be. So you will see your meetings all coming up here. Then you click on any of them and you click on join, right? This is the Skype mechanics. How to do this on Teams? Here on Teams, we have this menu here called meetings. And you're gonna see here on your screen all upcoming meetings per day. In my sample here, I have three upcoming meetings happening on the same day. This view I saw on my computer is because uh, I'm not connected to an exchange server. If I were connected to exchange server, you would see this view. In this view, you would see this calendar format uh, showing you per day and hour where are the meetings. And uh, there is a marker that will show in which point, in which hour you are on the day. In this way, you just need to put your mouse over the event and click on join. For the ones who are not connected to a exchange server, you will see like this. Then you just click on join. This pop-up window will appear asking you to configure how you want to join the audio settings and the video settings. Then you simply click on join. This pop-up mechanic is the exact same with exchange or without a change all right let's leave the meeting and move on public status here on skype when you click here on this uh, available drop down we can choose which is our public status and uh, in many companies many corporations people are you should see if you are working or if you are not working based on this status if you are busy if you are available etc so how to do the same in teams here on teams you click on your profile picture up here you click here on available and here you choose these options that are the ones that the teams has available for you to choose they are quite similar busy do not disturb be right back appear away appear offline reset the status in case you play with any of these and you want it to be back to up to automated and you can even define for how long Long, you want the status that you chose to be like that until it resets back so a very interesting option this duration option right here let's move on but before that what about thinking of being a subscriber now <laughs> if you have seen until here that means that you are liking right i'm counting on you to subscribe and like and support me otherwise some will be like skype you know going for good <laughs> contacts Here on Skype, your contacts are listed like this. You are searching them up here. Once the names appear down here, you can right click on them and add it to any group. And, um, and one after another, they start piling up down here. And here is your list of uh, favorites or any group that you have. In my case here, I have six groups. So how to create uh, groups and uh, add contacts in there in Teams. Here on calls menu, you click on speed dial. In speed dial, I have already these two contacts that I had previously added. If I click here, I can remove them from favorites on speed dial and see the screen becomes blank. How to add one content to speed dial or create a new group. If I click here on speed dial, I just need to type the name of the person who wants to be speed dial. I click add and the person will appear in speed dial and as other contacts. Because all people that you add on this screen becomes part of the US other contacts, become, become part of this big list. Then if we click up here in new group, we just need to inform any name. So YouTube group, let's put this way. Great. See the group appear up here. If we click on the three dots, we can add a contact to this group. Once we once we click on it, we just need to type the name of the person we want to add to that group and clicking add. And see, the person appears here right away. If we want to add more, we just uh, keep doing the same process of adding more people. And see, voila, we have uh, groups and we have contacts. And this is how you maintain them in Teams. Favorites. In Skype, you have one predefined group called Favorites. And in this group, you add for each content that you have. If you right click on them, you can add them to Favorites. It's already built in functionality. In Teams, Favorites is called a Speed Dial. So if we want to add anyone to Speed Dial, we just saw on the previous step. We just need to click on this button here, Add to Speed Dial. Type the name of the person, click in Adding. 
and the voila, the person is here on speed dial. Now folks, you are ready to face the unavoidable change and you have an opportunity to make this change in your workplace before the change to come and hit you hard. I bet that your IT and the HR departments are already in touch with your whole company to start promoting this change, aren't they? What about the thinking in being a subscriber now? Again folks, if you have seen until here, it means that you like it, right? Otherwise, very soon I'll be like Skype, you know? <laughs> I'll be going for good. Thank you for watching, see you next week.